Hi, you've probably heard that Docker 1.13 is now out and ready for everybody to use. So let's take a look at some of the key features in Docker 1.13. First of all, if you're using Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, auto updating will take care of installing 1.13 for you, so you won't have to worry about it. In fact, if you've been using the beta channel of 1.13, you've been automatically getting 1.13 and you've been using it for um, a little while now. Okay, so let's take a look at the features. There's a, a bunch of stuff in, including the usual bug fixes and stability and improvements, which are always in a new release of Docker. But there's some key features that I really want to emphasize right now. The first new feature in Docker 1.13 is Docker Stack Deploy. Now, Stack Deploy was introduced in Docker 1.12 as experimental. In 1.13, it consumes a compose file in the new Compose v3 format. Docker Stack Deploy is important because it allows you to use a compose file to create a multi-host, multi-service application and deploy it directly to Swarm. Let's take a look at what that actually looks like. All right, so I'm going to take uh, an existing Swarm. And I've got this uh, compose file here. And you'll see in there, there's a deploy key, which is new. It, you'll see at the top too, it says V3 compose, because this is the, the newest version. And within that deploy key, there's all sorts of things that you can set, including the number of replicas that you want for a particular service. You can say it's deployment configuration, you know, whether you want to spread it out or have it all deploy on one node. You can set kinds of nodes that you want it to go on. Say you want it, a particular service to only go on manager nodes or only go on worker nodes. And uh, you can set all sorts of different things. Any, pretty much anything that you can do with Swarm mode, you can do in, uh, in this Compose file, at least in terms of uh, the services. All right, so now I just use docker stack deploy dash s compose file and give the stack a name. In this case, I'm using vote. And then you can see it populates the services pretty quickly. And then here uh, is the, uh, the swarm visualizer that I wrote to, uh, to visualize the, uh, the physical layout of the application. So now if I go back into the compose file and change the number of replicas to six on the, the voting app, then um, I, it, you can see it changes really quickly. And now the, the target number is six and Docker engine and Swarm mode just uh, spin up the extra replicas and distribute them through the nodes. And then finally, if I want to remove the service, all I have to do is say Docker stack remove. And the Swarm is still there, but the stack of applications is now gone. Okay, that's pretty cool. Not only can you use this one file to deploy your entire application on multiple hosts and also to update it, you can also use it as a planning tool with other members of your team to plan the distribution of the entire application. For more information, check out the docs right here. There's a new set of commands that a lot of users have asked for, and that is the Docker system commands. Now, Docker system allows you to check how much resources are being used and also to trim, to prune the stuff that you're already using so that you can free up resources on your laptop or your development environment. Let's take a look at how you can use Docker system to free up resources. So the first thing you can do is type in Docker system DF, and that just shows you where everything actually is. Now you'll see that I have a bunch of containers running, I've got local volumes, and I've got a bunch of images. So this shows me what's reclaimable in terms of the things that aren't currently being used that I could, uh, I could go after to, to clean up on my system. Now if I do Docker system prune, it tells me, okay, here's all the things that I'm going to remove all your stopped containers, extra networks that are not being used, dangling images, um, and any volumes that are not being used. So this is a powerful thing to do, and you want to be careful, of course, because, you know, if you've got extra volumes and you've got data stored in that volume, uh, you don't want to just necessarily lose it. 
but chances are um, you're doing this on a um, uh, either on a production machine which is backed up or on your local development environment and you're just trying to clear up and, and free resources um, and the interesting thing to note here is it's not going to remove images automatically because images are something that you want to uh, decide on. So prune doesn't do that for you automatically. There are uh, subcommands that you can use that will, uh, that will prune out uh, individual things on here instead. So then I just uh, let that go and you'll see that um, it deletes a whole bunch of stuff and frees up that space. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And now my system is a lot cleaner and I can go and figure out which images I want to remove. We've also done some work on the user interface. So all your old commands still work, but we've introduced some new commands that parallel some of the old commands to make them more consistent. So for instance, we now have Docker image list, which works the same as Docker images to show you all the images that are available to you. And we also have new commands under Docker build that allow you to say, build a network. And also older Docker clients will now be able to talk to newer Docker servers. There's also a couple of experimental features as we always have in uh, Docker engine. So for instance, there's Docker build using the squash flag, which allows you to um, build a image using only one layer. And there's also Docker service logs, which aggregates all the logs from a particular service that's running in swarm mode. As usual, there's a whole bunch of stuff I couldn't get to in the short video, but we have all that information aggregated into the change log, so go and check that out. And also check out, of course, docs.docker.com. And if you have any questions, head on over to the forums or to Stack Overflow and tag your questions as Docker. All right, thanks a lot, and I hope you enjoy this release as much as I do.